I, I the Subway Series is just elevated, right? So I was in the stands before the game, and this Yankee fan is screaming at the top of at the top of his lungs, "Hey Mets, you have more uniform combinations than you do championships." And I was like, "Oh gosh." Is a Subway Series. It was heated. It was electric. It well, was I mean, they haven't won since 2009, so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, here, this guy. If we're just going to be. It, you know, accurate. they like to go. What was the energy like, Lauren? Give me, give me, give me a feel of the energy. Well, I mean, every, first of all, baseball? JP was in here, JP Morosi, the other day, and he said, Lauren, it felt like October. I, I did not feel that because October, in the, we've all been it's in the Bronx. Oh, October. it's different. No, no, no. It's it was different. not like that. Yeah. All right, it's but big. something. It was a big pivotal win for the Yankees, I think. Strange things always go down in the Subway Series, though. <laughs> it's crazy. It starts off like a normal game, and you think you're just going to, all right, it's going to be a little four hour mix and matcher. And next thing you know, bullets are flying, weird plays are happening. Bunts. Exactly. So I normally throw this up here and we'll do the deep dive and we'll look at three tiles. For sake of time, and I'm going to bring out a special guest who's going to stay with us for the remainder of the show, I wanted to do a two tile. Subway series takeaway, okay? I want to get into a little fundamentals, and then I want to get into a little hitting breakdown on Pete Alonzo and what I'm seeing at the plate, okay? Glaber Torres right here. Social media was blowing up on this play that Lauren talked about. Let's get into it. This is classic fundamental baseball. Jeff McNeil right out of the shoe. Pause this for me. Man on first, 2-1 game, gapper to right center. So you're playing this out in your head. From jump, ball goes in the gap. I know that Pete Alonso is in the 15th percentile of sprint speed. So what does that tell me if I'm the second baseman and I'm going out? I got to play at the plate. There's something happening right here. If Judge gives me a good throw that I can turn and wheel and make a play at the plate. There's a lot of run, and we'll get into it, on IKF having to be his eyes, which I totally agree with. I played middle infield in the big leagues 14 years. I get it. But at the same time, that play is happening in front of you. So if you're running out as a second baseman, you're kind of peak. There's peaking going on. You know where you're going with the ball. I don't need Isaiah Kiner Falefa to tell me everything unless someone trips. Okay? And that's exactly what happens. Run this. So I'm thinking home, home, home. Give it to me, Judge. Flat tire coming around third. He sees it. That play's happening right in front of him. And in that moment, he decides to himself, and we're going to pause this a couple more times throughout, let it run. He decides to himself. He sees it. Run that back for me. Watch this. Go. Pause. He's looking right at it. He sees it. He took a peek like every second baseman does. He sees Pete. I still got to play. He's picking that ball up right there. He knows Judge is going to stick him right in the ribs, and he can fire a one-hopper to home. Play it to plate. He's going for it right here. Huh. And he comes up right there. Unbelievable job. Jeff McNeil was going to get himself thrown out on that play. He had conceded, I'm going to let... Alonzo get home and I'm going to try and get in a run down here and let him score in that situation. He's going. And he's able to get back because he sees Pete Alonzo running with his head up right there. So for me, I get the Isaiah Kiner Falefa situation where he needs to be his eyes. But in that moment, Glaber Torres sees the play. He knows where the runners are at. And he made a decision in his mind that he thought, I can beat Jeff McNeil back to this bag. Watch this play right here. It's earlier, August 6th. It's not like Glaber Torres doesn't have the arm. Similar situation. Pause this. I don't know what Isaiah kiner Falefa is doing in this situation that's any different from what happened last night. I don't know why he's not in a double cut. Maybe that's something analytically they went over. He's kind of hovering second base. That's a guaranteed double. So there's no reason for him to be at second base. You're not throwing Goldschmidt out. If he could get in a double cut situation, but run this. Glaber throws a rocket to home to get Nolan Gorman. Ooh. Just a crazy play that allowed them to tie the game. There was a lot of variables there, but you simplify it. Know your runner's speed. You looked at it. Plays at the plate all day long. So that was interesting to me to think he could get to second base. Sometimes you black out. You have moments where you're not thinking. Okay, Pete Alonzo. I want to dive into him. He's finding a way to get his hits, okay? But I want to pause this. I want to bring out one of our 
workers here as well because he wanted to dive in. We were breaking this tape down, and he said, d -Row, I want to be a part of this. So come on out, Yonder Alonzo. He wanted to be a part of the A block. Let's do this, baby. What's up, Yonder? All right. What's up? What's up, guys? Okay. So real quick, let's set the scene with Polar Bear because we saw the same thing. He is finding a way to get a few knocks throughout the course of this little mini slide. Last 20 games, he's hitting 227 with one homer and 11 RBIs. Take you back to the beginning the of the season. The on-base percentage, too. It's low. Three okay. Three. Watch this. Strike zone. Steven Matz in April. Rockets the other way. We did a tape on this in April. Check out his setup. Run that back for me real quick. Watch how he's hitting off his backside. He's letting it travel. Watch his setup in the box. I mean, it's a nice piece of hitting right here. That's Ooh. staying inside something right there, off speed and driving it up the middle the other way. Here's Craig Stammen, slider away. I'm staying tall, shooting this the other way. Bomb, doubles, all of it. Beating Nick Castellanos. Oof, that's, that's a strong man right there, to be able to do that. Yeah. But it's the way he's doing it. He's letting the ball travel. We're going to get into a side-by-side -side of him in April and him last night after this awesome swing. How behind it? He's so behind it. it. Check it out. Yonder, the reason I say this, look at his feet, how closed off he is. Yeah. I, I, I think about this when I think about golf and people at home. He wants to be in such a, he's trying to be so concerted effort to go the other way that he's almost like positioning his body like Mentally this. Mentally trying to but do what it. What happens, right? Especially in golf. The You're not more behind you the close baseball. off, the more you hook. You spin up. The more you open up, the more you slice. I almost feel like he's putting himself in position where he's not allowing the ball to travel. Absolutely. Getting out in front. And you're deceptive to what? What pitches? Slider down and away. Fastball's Heater up. Heater up and in. And that's exactly what's happening here. So, so run into his ABs last night. You see him here in May. Stay tall. Stays behind it. I tell my son. <laughs> Throw your right tush cheek mm. at the baseball. So mm. you stay by, like, throw this at it. You don't want to be off. I off, think that's what's happening. Your back I, I feel like he's not seeing the baseball. I always wanted to see the baseball. I, I need to be behind it. When you get like this and you get more upright, I can, I'm only seeing three quarters of the ball and the top side of it. Yeah. I want to be behind that baseball. That way I can, you know, it, the problem there too is. Run this. And you can keep it. You gotta know yourself at the plate. Like, what's happening at the plate? It, didn't you feel like when you were struggling, you didn't know where home plate was at? Exactly. You start no man's to lose land. your sense of where the 17 inches, and you see it. He's he's battling out in front on a slider right there. He's talking to himself during his takes. You see, he's like looking in the box. Like, do I feel comfortable? Do look I know where the inner half? He's of the he's of looking plate at is? the plate. He's looking where he's at. Look at him, 3-1. He should be sitting all over something, middle of the plate and destroying it, and he's out in front on Frankie Montaz's slider right there. And there's Anthony Rizzo. Second at bat, frustration starts to boil over. He gets punched out on this high heater. Boom! You gotta be some ways of mad if you're gonna do that, huh? And strong. I've never in done that. In front of 40,000 people to take that chance is, is aggressive. And then his last at bat, Clark Schmidt obviously does him the favor 0-2 with the slider. He Fire. leaves over the heart of the plate, but he's still a little bit out front. So this is like classic. And he's fighting it. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that take right there. Out front right there. And the beauty, beauty part of it, he's still been able to be somewhat yeah. productive through a little bit of a slide. Well, his hand acronation is so good. You know, where most guys, most sluggers will swing and miss, he'll hit it. Yeah. He'll hit it. I, I just think, like, for me, it comes down to down here. When, when you're down here and you're locked in, upper body, just it, it's just hands to the ball after yeah. that. But if you're not seeing it, if you're not behind it, and you're kind of jumping where, you know, that anchor, I always talk to Edgar Martinez, and I used to tell him, you know, I feel quick, I feel rushed. And he kind of said to me, hey, are you Latin? Are you Cuban? I was like, yeah, yeah. He said, you know how to dance a little salsa? I said, yeah. He goes, you gotta feel like that in the box. And he kind of shifted my weight where I was so locked in back here and it was just a rocket coming out. As soon as that ball was landed, whew, Everything I was out. Him. And the slide, I was deceptive to sliders, to change ups, fastballs up in the zone. All of a sudden, he on. pushed my weight a little bit more forward and he said, let's do the Nolan, where it was whoop, now we're dancing. Whoop, yeah. now we're behind the baseball. Now when you're behind the baseball, you're aware of your strike zone, you're aware of your takes, you're aware of your swings. 
everything becomes a lot better when you have time, and I think that's what it needs.